Hi everyone, welcome to today's video. So this is Singapore roughly 50 years ago. And this is Singapore today. It has developed a lot. Now entire case studies can be built around this and I can give you a lot of knowledge. But there are three summarized points that I will tell you why this country was able to develop so fast. Number one point is that their government spent a lot of money in terms of infrastructure development that led to gross fixed capital formation. This is an economic term which simply means that the government has put money in terms of construction of road, highways, bridges, this, that stuff. But was it productive expenditure? Because if the roads get built and in the next three days, they start to build the roads to build the roads, to build wires and what not, right? So that's not productive use of capital, so to say, right? So the first key reason why Singapore developed was that their government paid a lot of emphasis in terms of creating efficient infrastructure, which led to higher gross fixed capital formation. The second key reason why Singapore developed well was that they followed a responsible public-private partnership model in which the government or the nation ended up owning critical resources. For example, you can telecom. So Singtel is the company that controls majority of telecom, which is held by Tamasek, if I'm not mistaken, which is held by the Singapore government. That's a strategic asset. Read about Singapore's airport, that who has developed it, who controls it now. Again, you will find that Changi owns it, Changi controls it. And basically that again is controlled by the government, so to say. So there has been no loss of critical critical infrastructure from the government. The third key thing is that has created a lot of harmony, a lot of trust with the Singaporean government is the fact that they have actually worked towards the betterment of their people. Okay, the healthcare in Singapore is subsidized. The quality of education right from primary school all the way to higher education is extremely subsidized. People can avail very low cost, very, very high quality education right from nursery play group all the way till college. Third key thing, housing. So in housing, there is a board called as Housing Development Board, which is run by the Singapore government. They literally changed the way the entire Singapore functions. Almost 92% people who own these HDB housing come from middle income to lower income segments of the Singaporean society and they end up owning houses. 92% is the home ownership rate of these HDB houses. These are high quality houses. In fact, I lived in one of them when I was in Singapore and by no standards, these could be considered as low quality inferior housing projects. So to cut the long story short, Singapore grew really fast because spent on infrastructure was brilliant. It was amazing. On top of this, jo critical services, hoti hai, healthcare, education, housing, these have been provided to people at reasonable rates and till date, people avail benefit from it. Therefore, over time, Singapore has become a high productive nation, so to say, and it sees a lot of allegiance towards its government and unke citizens ko fayda hota hai. How exactly? Take a look at the Singapore tax rate. Unka aap slab dekho ge, to aapko pata chalega ki they are spending how much. The personal income tax is roughly 22%. It's a wider tax base. Aisi feeling nahi aati ki yaar aapko hai na chuna lagaya ja raha hai that so much tax is being charged for you and you're not getting anything in return. You are paying 22% tax but at the end of the day, majority of the Singaporeans send their kids to public schools. Now what is the situation in India unfortunately? Well, if you have to send your kids to school, kya ho raha hai? Massive fees inflation. What is the situation of housing? Ki bhai sa project shuru hota hai, aap loan le le ke, I mean you take so much loan, EMI bharne ke liye and then the house does not get completed. But on the flip side, we keep on speaking about the fact that so many highways, railways, this, this is getting developed. But aap tickets book karane jao, aapko rail ki tickets nahi milti and all that stuff. So what exactly is the problem in India infrastructure space? Are there any investment opportunities in the India infrastructure space? how you should approach it. I will try to explain this topic by giving you very simple, easy to understand examples. These type of videos are going to benefit you if you watch it with a non-political lens. I'm going to speak for and against the government on this topic. I'm going to highlight good work that they have done, bad work that they are doing, so that you at least understand the topic and form a rational opinion. Please, don't political discussion. Ke liye mat lena. Mujhe thoda bhi farak nahi varta. Why? Neither am I a spokesperson of any political party. Neither am I a political party mantri. Wali hai, right? So, I don't have any difference. I am an honest tax-paying citizen. I am just sharing my perspective on this entire issue, showing you data.
So with that said, let's begin. And the first key question that comes is that why is infrastructure so critical in a country like India? In very simple language that India right now is on a demographic dividend. Demographic dividend ka matlab ye hota hai ki and simple example say I will help you understand that see guys, when you are young, you are hungry, you are aspirational, you can have the energy, you can work hard, you can create a lot of economic output for the country, for yourself, better your life, all that stuff. So that in very simple understanding viewpoint is the demographic dividend of a country. India is a very young country. This is our comparative advantage that for example, the Western world is getting stagnated. So to say, there is decline in population. India's population is going to peak somewhere around 2060, 2065. Pass. So in India, there is young, hungry population which is full of energy and it can do amazing work. But unfortunately, if the infrastructure is not built productively, please notice the word productively. If the infrastructure is not built productively, unfortunately, it does not translate to anything. It is like ki aapke paas ek magga hai, right? I mean, a small jar and usme you are trying to fill water, but that magga or jar, that jar has a hole in the bottom and you can keep on pouring money or water into it, but wo se nikal jayega. so that is the precise problem in terms of infrastructure development in India. You yourself would have noticed ki bhai, itni sadke banti hai, sab kuch banta hai. Agle din aaye, bhai, khud di road, right? Yeah. What was the point of building the road in the first place? Agar aapko agle din diga bhi karni thi. Makes no sense. There are so many potholes. There is so, such poor quality of construction on real estate. So many negative, negative things are there. So this is not a rant video. This is an analysis video. But the first key point that I would request you to understand is very simple. That's see, just throwing money in terms of constructing off road or throwing money in terms of constructing the next shiny building does not equate to infrastructure creation. Okay, just because you are spending X trillion dollar on construction does not mean that infrastructure has become good. It takes a lot to create quality infrastructure and it reflects in the end things of how it's going to benefit you. There is a very high divergence between the money being spent on infrastructure and the type of benefit it is creating for our citizenry. Just answer a very simple points. I know that a lot of people would just simply get triggered. So my question is to them that see guys, tell me one very simple basic thing that if the infrastructure in our country is so good, if so much progress is happening, why is it that the youth unemployment rate is close to 15%, 15% in India right now? Why? All the end results do not lie, right? So that's the negative part. Now the positive part is that see, a lot of things revolve around marketing. You can sell a lot of bad products simply because you have marketed them exceptionally well, right? A classic case study is stock market, so to say. Ki bhai, agar sentiments baut achche hai, then things can keep on going bullish, bullish, bullish. Fundamentals will catch up, but it might take a decade to catch up to the fundamentals, so to say. So on that note, in case you are very bullish about infrastructure, looking at the GDP numbers, kya chai, itna trillion dollars we are spending on infrastructure. So therefore, our infrastructure is great and therefore more money will flow in. That's a narrative that you are choosing to believe in, then you are believing in the marketing. Do I I believe in it 100%. I see value in marketing. There is no denying that. That India as a brand has come up. It has created a lot of impact in the world. So many people, investors are bullish about India. This is exceptionally good marketing. This is where we have done an exceptional job and the current government should be lauded for that. This is an excellent step and please do not take it otherwise. Doing really good marketing is a very important step in any economy. So on that note, in case you're looking to make infrastructure investments, one of the simplest way of riding that bull on infrastructure would be that you could consider investing in these type of mutual funds. In a return diya, you can definitely go and check out, do more due diligence. That's one very simple way of riding riding this infrastructure wave. Now, let me deep dive into India's data and let me start sharing some numbers, facts and figures. So number one, if you take a look at the capital expenditure in the last five years, you will see that there has been lakhs of crores of rupees have been spent on infrastructure. Now, infrastructure is a deeply complicated topic. Yaar, kyunki, you know, kisi bhi mein, right? Road banana is an infrastructure, but us road ko khod dena is destruction of infrastructure. Ta, is ko account kaise karoge? So accounting is really, really tough. So there are few more data points that I will share, then I will deep dive into it. See, if we look at the road constructed on per day kilometer basis, then you will see that in the financial year 2023, mein, exceptional work has been done by the government. They right? I mean, it only used to be 12 kilometers of road constructed every day. Now it has reached 42 kilometers. But here, you should know some counterpoints. And 
there is just no way to validate the authenticity of these points but these points were highlighted by dr paragala prabhakar i don't know what the veracity of this data is if any of you can validate or invalidate this that would be very useful for our entire community to get better understanding but just quickly take a look at this clip computing of even these things are having a problem because you know earlier can i can i interrupt no, just one 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 sentence karan earlier One kilometer of a four-lane road used to be one kilometer of a four-lane road. Now, one kilometer of a four-lane road today is four kilometers. So, therefore, when you boost up everything, now similarly, a lot of talk has happened that you know what? So many new airports have been built in India. Yes, that is true. But what is the net connectivity of those airports? For example, the city where I come from, which is Gwalior Airport, yeah, वहाँ पे hardly तीन या चार cities की आपको flights मिलती हैं. That's it. जो आपकी regular चलती होंगी and all that stuff. So, ठीक है, fine. New airports have been constructed, but but honestly, if you are having just three or four flights out, then it's not very healthy from that perspective. But having said this, again, trying to help you understand the full picture here. That see, development of airport will be step one. Then after that, maybe improving connectivity would be another. Bringing cost down would be another aspect of it so the progress will happen in layer so i am hopeful that over time there will be more development that will be happening in this space now of course these are my opinions and inclinations which i can't balance it out so i will try to show you real data here which will help you understand more about the efficiency of infrastructure in india now again there is a matrix called as gross fixed capital formation for infrastructure and here what you will notice is that from the year 2021 there has been a constant decline in gross fixed capital formation What does that mean? For example, consider two aspects. One is that hey, you are going and creating statues. One could keep on making the argument that you know what, its got a lot of returns. Hai. So many shops are created. So many tourism comes. This that by there is something called as feasibility study. Just show the feasibility study before spending thousands of crores of taxpayers' money on creating statues. If you can validate it, that okay, so much tourism will come. Here is an estimate that has been given by X Y Z organizations. Three independent parties have validated it. Then of course. these type of projects should be support but on the flip side if you are improving your public education system where people want to send their kids to public school that is a definite improvement in terms of your gross fixed capital formation because why because human capital undoubtedly for a young country aspirational country like india is going to be the number one mover on this space unfortunately in india we keep on talking about the fact yaar itne iims ban gaye hai itne iits ban gaye okay great itne iims iits ban gaye but what's the point even if from old iits or iims students are having the worst possible placement scenario which we have witnessed in several years so here a snippet aap dekh bhi sakte ho ki you know this year the placements at iits have been really sad really bad you yourself if you are in the job market you will see that the job market situation in india is really really bad right now counter arguments i keep on getting you know what akshat this has been a problem after covid that people are not getting jobs no that is not correct for example check the data for any developed nation check it for the us what is the unemployment rate there well it's less than 4% what is the unemployment rate in japan jiski debt to gdp ke bare mein sab log baat karte rehte hain what has been the unemployment rate there well it's very very low so to cut the long story short yes a lot of money is being spent on infrastructure in india but is it leading to better healthcare better job outcomes better education better facilities for common people is that really happening or not again that's a subjective answer you can have your own opinion i am trying to show you both the sides of the story so continuing to deep dive into the data and let me highlight three four critical problems that i personally see now of course you might might not agree with this the first critical problem on india's infrastructure development is the disproportionate spent by different state yahan se aapko puri state list mil jayegi and what you will see that if you take a look at the number of projects and the total project cost and you will clearly see that gujarat and maharashtra have been the primary beneficiary of infrastructure development in india so to say jahan pe majority paisa gaya hai now is that equitable growth the short answer is no because if there are deep pockets of under development happening in india and equitable growth is not happening that will just lead to a lot of migration to certain states so to say fir wohi hub ban jate hain ki bangalore aate hain delhi aate hain mumbai aate hain char chhe jagah hain and there is massive infrastructure pressure 
and yeah it just destroys the city right bangalore at one point in time used to be a beautiful city very green clean less pollution etc ab aap jaake dekh lo right it takes like two and a half three hours just to get to the main city from the airport now is that sustainable what will be the situation after 10 years har jagah pani khatam hone lag gaya hai wagera wagera so yes one could argue that a lot of money is going to certain states but if equitable development does not happen there will be mass influx of population in certain pockets and that will literally destroy the cities the second key problem in our infrastructure is the sale of strategic assets for example now i'll not go into the details of it bahut sare corporates hain india mein which are friends with the government they end up getting majority of the projects etc etc and that is just lopsidedness for example if you pick the telecom industry in india which is a critical part of digital infrastructure it is controlled by a private business if you look at ports airports road development majority of the contracts are again given out to private players contrast this example to singapore right as i was saying that hey telecom which company controls it it's a government company which is singtel airports who controls it again it's the government now i get the counter argument ki are you know what then a lot of money will not come in where will we raise money to build this infrastructure and what if these private players are very honest bhai dekho private players are capitalist that's how it is i'm not trying to question their business model but at the end of the day the price for you is going to go up a classic case study is for example and this is not my work these are the words of airline companies who have raised objections over increased charges at adani owned airports right this is example number 1 example number 2 that if you take a look at bsnl telecom aapko pata hoga ki bsnl pe government ne bhar bhar ke kharcha kiya hai now what is it that bsnl does वो मोबाइल टावर्स लगाते हैं नाउ बिल्डिंग दैट क्रिटिकल इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर मेजर खर्चा तो टावर्स बनाने में आता है सो बी एस एन एल एज बिल्ट अलॉट ऑफ टावर्स नाउ प्राइवेट कंपनीज आर यूजिंग इट ऑन ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थर्टी थर्टी ईयर लीजेज बी एस एन एल तो वो टावर बना बना के बैंक हो गया एंड आपका पैसा उसमें लग गया नाउ अदर पीपल आर कमिंग एंड प्लकिंग द मैंगोज सो द बॉटम लाइन इज दैट सम वन प्लांटेड द ट्रीज वो ट्री प्लांटेशन उगने में बहुत टाइम लगा नाउ सिंस फ्रूट्स हैव स्टार्टेड टू कम राइट private players are plucking those fruits the next major problem is the sustainability of infrastructure problem yaar bahut acha lagta hai sunne mein ki you know what india mein bullet trains aa rahi hain and pata nahi kya kya aa raha hai and all that stuff very good maza aa raha hai ye sab cheeze sunke but see think about it this way ki kisi bhi tarike ki complex machinery use karna ya complex infrastructure use karne ke liye you need skilled man power india mein there is massive skilling issue another important note you can check it from this tweet you will see that in india only 5% of the workforce is trained ab aap palat ke mujhe jawab dene lag jaoge ki baaki jagah pe nahi hota ye wo hota hai bhai baaki jagah pe the training cost that is picked up apprenticeship model jaise for example aap germany ka dekho ya japan ka dekho it's very very high a lot of money goes into training the manpower every country understands that your people are your biggest strength if you don't invest in good education good healthcare afford हेल्थ केयर वगैरह वगैरह व्हाट्स द पॉइंट राइट व्हाई आर पीपल पेइंग टैक्सेस इन इंडिया द क्वालिटी ऑफ लेबर इज रियली लेस दीज आर नॉट माय वर्ड्स दीज आर द वर्ड्स दैट हैव बीन कवर्ड ऑन मल्टीपल पब्लिकेशंस मल्टीपल रिसर्च रिपोर्ट्स जहां के हिसाब से मेजॉरिटी ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग ग्रेजुएट्स इन इंडिया आर अनएम्प्लॉयएबल फ्रॉम अ स्किल पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू नाउ ऑफ कोर्स पीपल विल टर्न अराउंड अब तो इकोनॉमिस्ट ही आने लग गए इस चीज में कि यू नो व्हाट लोगों को बड़ा सोचना चाहिए बिजनेसमैन बनने का सोच लेना चाहिए दिस दैट स्टफ भाई if people are given that level of training maybe they will become better entrepreneurs maybe they will become better at whatever job they are doing it's not critical that they become entrepreneurs only there should be sustainable jobs in the market for which people will aspire if the jobs itself are not there what is the incentive to upskill so in short let me start summarizing some of the key points number 1 has infrastructure development taken place in india absolutely yes government has done a wonderful job in terms of spending more money on infrastructure creation big big airports are built big big statues are built big big parliaments are built wagera wagera all that is great second question that is it practically benefiting the end user as of now the short answer is absolutely not the cost of education has gone up the cost of healthcare has gone up employment situation is out of hand there is massive unemployment in india right now people are just getting entertained ki sasta internet mil gaya ipl laga laga ke dekhte rahenge ya reel scroll karte rahenge ungliyan ghiste rahenge apni people are entertained just by engaging in all this stuff and they cannot see beyond headlines which is problem number 3 that jaise pehle log newspaper headline dekh ke they used to form opinions similarly now people do not have patience to look into the in depth data on anything 
सिर्फ नंबर पता चल जाता है कि यू नो वॉट एक्स ट्रिलियन डॉलर्स हैव बीन स्पेंड सो ऑटोमेटिकली थिंग्स हैव बिकम बेटर माई एडवाइस टू यू वुड बी दैट प्लीज चेक वॉट दी प्रोडक्टिविटी ऑफ दैट स्पेंड इज दैट मेट्रिक्स इज कॉल्ड एज ग्रोस फिक्सड कैपिटल फॉर्मेशन चेक इट फॉर योर सेल्फ यू योर सेल्फ विल सी द रियल पिक्चर फाइनली नो गवर्नमेंट इज डूइंग यू अ फेवर बाय स्पेंडिंग योर टैक्स मनी ऑन इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर डेवलपमेंट इट इज सपोज टू बी स्पेंड फॉर द बेनिफिट ऑफ द पीपल इन एन इक्विटेबल वे वन ऑफ द प्राइमरी पॉइंट देर वी नीड टू कीप इन माइंड इज दैट सी गाइज द स्ट्रेटेजिक एसेट्स वंस दी कंट्री स्टार्ट लूजिंग इट सब कुछ प्राइवेट खिलाड़ियों के हाथ में चला जाएगा अल्टीमेटली प्राइजेस विल बी जैक्ड अप फॉर यू इट विल बी कॉल्ड एज कैपिटलिज्म बट दैट एंटायर कैपिटलिस्टिक मॉडल हैज बीन बिल्ट हाउ by doing massive loan mafi for the corporates by giving them special advantages in terms of debt restructuring by giving them massive access to public money jiske through wo companies banaye gayi hain port banaye gaye hain wagera wagera that is the reality i am very happy to listen to any facts or counter facts that you would like to present very happy to listen to that side please do not make it a political debate would request you that if you share these videos with your friends in your family groups etc then it gets more traction more people are made aware of the things on which they need to think i am not telling you how to think i am just presenting data in front of you and asking you to investigate my opinion is not the right opinion my opinion is just one opinion of the many opinions but hopefully it will prompt you to do your own due diligence and trust your brain at the end of the day thank you so much for watching and i'll see you